Ready? Action. I started painting when I was a little girl, mostly horses actually. I started with horses because horses are awesome. I don't usually paint donkeys, but they're close enough to horses that I should be able to, you know, at least make it look like a donkey. You've seen donkeys a lot, you know what donkeys are. Now the second picture that I painted, can you tell me who that is a statue of? I mean, if I was doing the Statue of Liberty, and even if I just did like a really rough sketch of it, you'd obviously be like, Statue of Liberty. But I was doing a statue of a person. Can you identify her? Do you know who that is? Most of you probably not. Even though it wasn't an exact replica, it was close enough that had you seen this image, this statue, had you spent any time with it, you would recognize it. But you don't have a memory of it if you've never seen it. It's kind of like how I feel sometimes as a sister living in North America. Most people, have never had a personal contact, had personal contact with a sister. Most people don't exactly know what a sister does and who she is. Maybe they've seen something on the media, maybe they've watched a movie with sisters, maybe they've read something, maybe they have a bit of an idea. But oftentimes it's not exactly accurate because they've never met a sister personally. I was traveling in BC a couple years ago and there was a girl beside me and really enthusiastically she goes to me, Oh, God bless you, sister, for making a sacrifice of your life. I was speechless. I mean, that'd be kind of like me going to Mrs. Jones on her wedding day, congratulating her and saying, God bless you, Mrs. Jones, for making a sacrifice of your life. I don't know how Mr. Jones would feel about that. As a sister, my life certainly involves sacrifice. Thanks be to God, because that's the best way to show love. But primarily, my life is not sacrifice. Primarily, my life is love. And love is irresistible. Jane Austen, in her first novel, was talking about the hero and the heroine and their dancing. And she writes, listening with sparkling eyes to everything he said. In finding him irresistible, she became irresistible herself. And that's what happened to me when I was at university. I started spending a lot more time with God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And my memory, my mind was becoming filled with his love. But also when I went and was a missionary, in Jamaica, in Kingston, Jamaica, for four years, I was surrounded by my kids who were literally irresistible. They all had disabilities in the orphanages. They were so irresistible that I started to recognize that God found them irresistible and he found me irresistible. There came a point where I just recognized that you've become so irresistible to me, Lord, that I wanna be your spouse. I'd grown up thinking that I was gonna marry the kindest man I could find, have eight kids and be a missionary. But listen to some of the things that Jesus was telling me. I mean, he was saying in Isaiah, because you're precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. He's saying in the Song of Psalms, this is my beloved, this is my friend. He's saying in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And I laid down my life. It became so clear to me that God became man, took my nature to save me, and he continues to, to do so every day in my daily battle with my selfishness. And he, can you blame me for choosing him, for falling madly in love with him? My beloved sister Francesca and my grandmother both had dementia, severe dementia before they both passed away. And because they no longer had a memory, they could no longer identify who they were. They could no longer say who they were. If we don't have a memory of God, if we don't have a memory of God's love, we're not going to be able to recognize that we are His beloved, that we are irresistible to Him. We're not gonna be able to recognize how precious we are, and we're not going to be able to recognize Him in the world around us. Blessed Margaret of Castello is a story I want to share with you. She was born in 1287 to aristocratic parents. And these parents were so horrified when she was born that they locked her up in a room from the age of six that was six feet by 16 feet. She had a hunchback, she was blind, she had different deformities, and she was alone in that room except for a very kind priest who would come and would share with her about God's love. He would read the scriptures to her. Her memory, her mind, her heart was filled 
not with feeling rejected by her parents on a daily basis, but she was filled with how much God loved her, that he had come to die for her. Even when her parents took her to Castello, when they felt they could no longer hide her away, they took her to Castello and they abandoned her blind in a church. The records say that the, the poor of the, the, the city would care for her, but her knowledge of God's love for her made her very kind and people started seeking her out, asking her for prayers. There was a point in her life where a person was saying, oh, I pity you so much for all your suffering, for all your deformities, for your disabilities. How did Margaret respond? <laughs> if you could only see my heart. Margaret knew who she was. She knew she was the irresistible beloved of God.